Evening, church family. Welcome to another Wednesday night gathering at Gateway. We're so glad you could be with us. Let's sing a couple of songs together to prepare our hearts this evening. I was buried beneath my sin. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You come my name. And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You come my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy, now your mercy has saved my soul, and now your freedom is all that I know, the old man knew, Jesus when I met you. You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of I needed rescue. I needed rescue. My sin saved me, but chains break at the weight of glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you're
faces Hope will arise Death is defeated The king is alive I raise a hallelujah With everything inside me I raise a hallelujah Oh my, but watch the darkness speak I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah Sing it out. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king. You have defeated sin. There is nothing to fear. We ask you, Lord, just to strengthen our faith today, that we may lean on you in every situation, that we may trust in you in every situation, that we may praise your name in every situation, Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Let's, amen. <laughs> Let's jump in there. Uh, good to be back with everybody again tonight, and uh, good to be back with you, Stephen, and yeah. getting to, to chat a little bit and yeah. go through some scripture together tonight. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I always look forward to Wednesdays. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Me too. Me too. Although, for whatever reason, Wednesdays have been the, the tough day for me lately <laughs> of uh, just kind of feeling, feeling a little... Uh, I don't know, Wednesdays I go more stir-crazy than other days for some reason, I think. But uh, maybe I'm just anxious to be here. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do before we jump in is just uh, kind of give a quick little update. Uh, some of you may have heard on the news and other things that there was a, a recent update on some guidelines for churches meeting. And uh, we got to read through those today. And, and they actually put something out a couple weeks ago and have come back and revised it a little bit more and are starting to get a lot closer to you know, just kind of relaxing some of the restrictions. The thing I want you all to know 
is that uh, we number one priority is making sure that, that we're being wise and uh, protecting the safety of our flock. Uh, so we will proceed with caution. We will look at every angle and you know come up with with uh, plans and you know what we can do. But we it is on our radar. Just know we're not going to just you know say hey let's start this Sunday all coming <laughs> back together. Uh, we're going to come to come up with a plan and make sure that everybody's safe. But for now, um, great suggestion you had for the topic tonight yeah. uh, to be one of just digging into what is what does faith look like and. You know, coming off of last week, we talked about worry. We talked about what Jesus said about, you know, not worrying about our life and what we'll eat and those kinds of things. But um, underlying that is a foundation of, of trusting God and faith. And so that's really where we're going to jump in tonight um, is idea of faith. And I want to kind of set that, I guess, that, that uh, define the, the term on the front end when we're talking about faith. Really what we're talking about is trust. We're talking about um, being willing to trust God with things because there's a difference between just believing what someone says and actually being willing to trust that person. Right. Um, and it's more than just believing, hey, the Bible's true or God's real, but do we really trust yeah. Him? You know, that's where we want to go tonight. Yeah, and I think one thing that stood out from last week to this week for me is just even thinking about salvation. And if we, we trust God with yeah. our eternity, surely we're going to trust him with the callings that he's going to put on our life while we're here. Right, absolutely. And, and you know, we've, one of the things that's been important to us in our discussions on Wednesday night is we, we want to talk about things that are, you know, right where we're at, us individually, right where you are, um, struggles that we have, and certainly talk about trusting through uncertain mm -hmm. times. This is a great, great topic for us where we are today. Yeah, I can't imagine uh, a better time than this to, to really dive into what is, uh, our faith really calling us to do and what's God really calling us to do and what, what, how does faith play into that? Right, absolutely. Yeah. So where are we going to be tonight? Where, where so we're going to be in Genesis chapter 12. Um, we're going to read the, the first few verses here, one through three, and then we're going to dive into a, a little bit more later. Um, but I love this looking at Abram and the calling that God's going to lay out before him. So um, in, in chapter 12, verse one, starting in verse one, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house, to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah that's, that's faith right there being called out. You know, I, I came across a great quote this week. It said, you know, the faith Abraham needed to succeed in the future was the same faith that he needed to trust God with the changes he faced in the present. You yeah. know where that great quote came from? I don't know. I, I think it came from you because it's in the notes <laughs> that you <laughs> That's sent great. me. So my real question is, did you steal it from someone? I did. Or did you come up with I, that I, on your own? That was actually pull, pulled out of some resources that All right, I have. Okay. So. <laughs> That's great. Give me some credit there. Yeah, that is good. That's great. That good. And I've read over it about 2,000 <laughs> times today, so it should have stood you out. You still didn't recognize <laughs> it when it came across there. But that is so true, isn't it? The, the, I mean, that's a great point. The faith that that he's needing in the future is the same faith, you know, to trust God right now. And yeah. I feel the same way with us, man. We can talk about the future and trusting God. We need that same faith right now to, to trust him right where we are. So, yeah. so Genesis 12, yeah, I, and I, I read that and I'm wondering what would have gone, been going through Abram's mind. I mean, if you were in his shoes and God comes to you and says the things that he says to Abram, what do you think is going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I think for me it is again knowing my personality. I would I immediately want to know how how is this going to work? And as I was reading through some resources today and diving into a lot of commentaries and thinking about this, some a few things that that came up is that God was asking him to do something extraordinary. Um, he was asking him to leave his family, everything that he's known, and to trust him. Um, but he also gave a few little encouraging nuggets. And these few little encouraging nuggets are not just promises that exist for, for Abram in this time. It's when God is calling us into something, those promises still exist. And so something that really stood out um, to me that even though he was calling Abram to do something unheard of, unimaginable, that, you know, big questions are, how is this even going to be possible? I'm going to a place that I don't even know, but God's telling me you're going to do this and I'm going to bless you. And so the biggest thing that stood out to me, he says that I will bless those that bless you. Yeah. And for me, knowing that I'm stepping out into the unknown, but God making a promise that I'm going to surround you with people that, that are going to lift you up 
just for the sake of you being you. Right. And, and that's what that promise was for, for Abram was, okay, I'm trusting you, Abram, to do this. And I know I'm asking you to do something amazing. But along this path, there's going to be people that bless you. And when they bless you, I'm going to bless them as well. And then he takes it a step further and say, not only am I going to bless you and I'm going to bless those that are surrounding you and, and encouraging you and lifting you up, I'm going uh, to... to um, dishonor those that, that dishonor you and I'm going to to protect you and I'm also going to you're going and but part of that promise is you're going to face opposition yeah. but when you face yeah. that opposition because of your faith I'm coming alongside of you and I'm going to protect yeah. protect you and so that whole concept of having that extreme faith comes with community as yeah. well I think that that's what stood out to me in, in three or four different commentaries that I read that kept popping out to me yeah that's good. And, and you know, I think the thing that to me has always been so cool about the end of verse 3 is in line with what you're saying. God says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless others. But then it says, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, man, what? I mean, think about that incredible promise. And I think that the people of God miss that for a season. I think we still do. Yeah. Today, sometimes we think it's all about us. But, but even back then, even when God was, was preparing a people that would be his people to honor him. He still says, my, my purpose is to bless all the people through you. And that, that just blows my mind. I'm thinking that's, a, that's an amazing thing. And, and he did, Abram did have some faith. But I think it's important to point out too, you mentioned it doesn't mean it would be without trials. He, he messed up quite a bit yeah. too and, and failed some of the tests. And so there's some encouragement there to know, you know yeah. if we don't do it perfectly, uh, he didn't either, but there is a lot that we can learn from, yeah. from him as well. So. Yeah, there's, there's a thing called grace that exists <laughs> with, along with our faith. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah so some of the things I'm, I'm sure for him, you know, just thinking through what would be, what would make this such a difficult message to receive. He had no context uh, for any of this. Mm-hmm. He had no context for uh, being able to have descendants come through him. You know, he, he had no children. Uh, really no prospects of children. We'll learn later, you know, that, that his wife uh, was well advanced in years. I mean, there were so many different things that he's going to a land that he doesn't even know. It just doesn't make sense from from our perspective, but God had a plan in that. Yeah, and, and typically when God's calling you to do something, a lot of times it doesn't make sense. You know, so, you know I was talking with one of our, our church members today who is stepping out in faith and saying, I'm, I'm not going to go back to the job that I had because I want to, to have more time to be able to, wow. to serve and to think about the, the, it's almost unimaginable to think, I'm going to stop doing what pr- provides for my family and trust God to provide for my family. Yeah. And it's, it's an amazing thing when you see people willing to do that. And it's yeah. a huge example of yeah. what their, their faith has driven them to this passionate love for um, their Savior. Wow. Yep. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, looking at the way God honored that, he certainly did. Um, and, and as we continue on, I want to just kind of read on a little bit further of, of what it says next, starting in verse 4. It says, So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated, and all the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land, which was a big deal, of course. Uh, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So just, I mean, just think, that's mind-blowing. He doesn't have offspring yet, but God promises. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the right. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Two verses in a row, it says that Abram built an altar. What's going on with that? Yeah, I think just a, a huge aspect of what was going on with Abram in this time of God's called him to do something extraordinary, and he's been faithful to him. Mm-hmm. And I think he, what really is going on is he's setting up these remembrances, this opportunity to be able to, to remember what God has done for him, what he's brought him from, and also continuing to, to move forward. And I think that's such an important aspect of our faith is remembering what God has done for us in, in different periods of time right. um, for us because it's what encourages us when we're in a valley. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's important to find those methods to, to be able to build those altars 
you know, I think something that stood out recently for me is just our Easter service when you asked um, everyone to have a rock and to write hope on it. You know, I think that was something that's monumental for us, that our family's going to have that in our house forever. Right. And we're going to remember what was going on in this time and just really how God was faithful. And what an, what an amazing altar that is, that you're, that altar is built out of remembrance and worship towards right. this, this God that you love so much. I appreciate one of the things you, when we were talking about this earlier, just kind of talking through some of the stuff in this passage, you pointed out the fact that, that God had him build an altar in the middle of his journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think sometimes we tend to think, hey, when I get something finished or when I get, you know, when I accomplish all this at that point, then I'll build an altar to God and I'll stop and I'll celebrate who God is and what God's done. But he's doing this right in the middle of it along the way. And I, I just thought that that really stuck with me when you said that is, you know, God does call us to build altars right in the middle of it. And mm -hmm. I mean, what better application is there than where we find ourselves right now to find ways? What, what are some other, are there other things that come to mind when you think about things yeah. we can be doing right now to, to in a sense, build an altar um, to what God is doing in the middle of our journey? Yeah. I mean, for me, something that's always been a staple in my walk with the Lord is journaling. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember before I even met Natalie, I would, would journal and write prayers about um, the spouse that God might have for me and thinking back to that t time period that I've set at this remembrance of what it was like um, to be single and valuing that time. Um, but looking back through some of those journals and the things that I was praying for, now I get to see it in my wife. And so every day I get to, to see God's faithfulness uh, and this is what I was asking for and I get to see it tangibly in front of me every single day. So I think documenting where you're at is, yeah. is one very important um, way that you can build an altar of remembrance. Yeah, and that really does, that ties into the faith thing because, you know, I, I'm so often guilty of just missing those, what I would call little things. I guess nothing's really a little thing when God's in it. But those things that God does that could easily just kind of slip under the radar and, and I might not realize this was a specific answer to prayer. This is something that I'd been you know, asking God for or to go back and record that and say, this mm -hmm. is what God has done and how I've seen God's hand in these situations. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that that's just a big deal. And even just in our, in our prayer time, you know, um, as we are praying back to God, I think it's important to just say, God, I recognize this is what you've done. You know, that's, I think, even part of our building an altar in the sense of worship to the Lord of I am remembering your goodness and your faithfulness and these things that you've done and kind of repeating that back to him, yeah. I think is helpful as well. That's huge. That's huge. I, I, I love that aspect of remembrance because there's, there's, you know, for me as a youth pastor, even thinking through past experiences at, at summer camp when I get to see these kids have these mountaintop experiences. Yeah. And one of my biggest prayers is that they will remember those moments. And so yeah. one of the things that I always think about is praying through is like these dumb camp t-shirts that we always have is like, maybe that will make them remember yeah. this yeah. moment. Or maybe this, you know, the, the prayer cards that we've, we, we do every year that we've gone to camp, that they'll have something tangible that they can remember how faithful God was in this moment yeah. because they're not going to be on this mountain forever. Right. But looking back for me personally, it was those camp type experiences that were the most early in my faith journey as a, as a new believer, as a teenager. Mm. I still remember that. And, and that was incredibly instrumental. And yeah. so having those things like that to help remember. Yeah. And I think yeah. right now is I think we're always going to remember this time period in our lives. So this is something that, you know, I think one day I'm going to be sitting down with my yeah. grandkids and telling them about the time that I was trapped in the house with their <laughs> with their dad or with their mom right. and what this moment was like yeah. and to be able to think back of how God really moved in this yeah. this period of time and we've already seen it we've seen salvations and we've seen right. um, people reach out in prayer with with these huge prayers and and seeing God move in that um, I think it's important right now to set up those altars in this season because God's doing something yeah. amazing and that, that's so right right on um, I, I just that's that's my prayer through all mm -hmm. this is that we see God do what God wants to do because it's just not a coincidence. I mean, God is, is not taken off guard. And, and in the middle of that, I'm praying that God builds our faith, you know, mm -hmm. that we really, um, that, that, we are, that we grow significantly in our faith as we walk through a time of uncertainty. And I believe he's doing that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it takes some intentionality on our part. We could miss it yeah. um, if we're not careful. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the, the next thing for me is just really thinking through as well. Um, 
is how do we how do we make the most uh, of the seasons that we're in, whether it's this season or the season that we're we're going to be in next. And you know, a, a big um, portion of that will be building an altar and remembering what God is doing. Um, but just really thinking through tangibly, us as a community, um, what are things for us? How how can we encourage one another? How can we lift up one another? What are things that the church provides um, to be able to help equip us and to help us grow? in our faith. So when we are facing these moments when God is asking um, us to do something extravagant, um, something that doesn't necessarily make sense, um, that we're, we're going to step into that instead of being appreh apprehensive with it. Yeah. And I think the, the church is so um, imperative uh, to be able to help equip and to help encourage in, in those seasons as yeah. well. And, and the, as you say, you talk a lot about biblical community, but just the people around us, I think, help us with that too. Uh, but, you know, looking at that, it really is the, you know, the Bible says, talks about how the, you know, the, the testing of our faith mm -hmm. develops this perseverance in us that, you know, turns into character and other things like that. But um, it really is when we're tested that we grow the most. And so we're, you know, we're talking here about Abram, and I cannot think about his faith without my mind going to a few chapters down the road. Yeah. Uh, chapter 22, where God f does provide this heir that he has promised uh, in Isaac. And he comes to Abram and he says, go sacrifice him on an altar. And, you know, obviously as a, as a father, you know, we see that from a, from a certain, or as a parent, you see that from a certain perspective, but think, um, I mean, you talk about your faith being tested. I mean, it, God put him in that position and um, of course, in this case, he did well. Mm -hmm. um, not sure how you do that in that situation, but he did. But I'm just thinking, God doesn't always hold back, does he, when it mm -hmm. comes to really, truly testing our faith? Yeah, and you know, I, I think back to to different periods in my life um, where God was was calling us to do something that wasn't necessarily easy. Um, and I can think back to times in my life when God was calling me to do something and I, I was disobedient and didn't listen and just how thankful I am that we have examples that we can read in scripture and, and that you know, we can learn so much from Abraham and, and the links that he was willing to go to for, uh, for God, but also um, the times that he, he stumbled and how God redeemed it, right. I think is, is so massive. You know, a lot of this as I was reading and, and thinking through the questions and stuff of, I couldn't help but think back to a few of those time periods. And one of them was just even coming here to Gateway, you know, seven years ago and just really praying through, like Natalie and I just really prayed through what are we looking for in our next church? And we wanted to stay in the DFW area. So that was a big prayer for us. And, and um, we didn't necessarily, that could be anywhere, <laughs> you know, right. in an hour away from you. So, but it led us to Wiley. And then when we first got here, you know, for me, I was like, I've never really, been a part of a, a student ministry where we're kind of starting from scratch and doing some things brand new. And, and I was questioning, you know, God, are you, is this really what you're calling me to do? Because I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just clear as day that this was exactly where we were supposed to come. Mm -hmm. And Natalie felt it and I felt it. But I never would have imagined what God was going to do with that obedience. Yeah. And for us to find not only a church to serve in, but to find a home. Um, to be able to serve alongside friends that I've never really experienced before in a church to say, you know, my pastor is a, a, one of my best friends and mm -hmm. to be able to, to have the community that we have, you know, the Lord's faithfulness through a question mark is, is amazing. Well, that's good. Sounds like a t-shirt right there. You're talking yeah. about t-shirts, the Lord's faithfulness <laughs> through a question mark. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. And that's what, that's really what I want to encourage you at home with tonight too, as we get ready to wrap it up is just, you know, make the most of the opportunities that you have to let your faith be tested and stretched and grown. And, um, you know, not just view this. I, I tell you, sometimes I slip into, I'm just going to, you know, kind of make it through another day until things get back to normal. And that's not the right mindset. The right mindset is how do I make the most of every day uh, so that I'm growing and God is, is doing his work in me through this, and he wants to do the same in you. And so uh, that's something I want to encourage all of us to just lean into some of the challenges that we have right now 
so that our faith can really be stretched. And it doesn't have to just to do with COVID stuff. I mean, just whatever is going on in your life, lean into that as an opportunity for God to stretch you and for God to grow you and for God to reveal his faithfulness in some unique ways that you would have never seen before, just like Abram would have never known certain aspects of God had he not gone through these things. Um, that's how our faith grows. So, um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's, that's great. And, and just I think we can incorporate that as a part of our, our prayer life. Yeah. Uh, you know, this week as well, just really praying through that our faith um, becomes bigger than the fear or the unbelief that we yeah. might experience. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, the unbelief and, and the question marks are going to come. But can our faith be bigger than, than those things that we, we face, face and, and look towards? So I think that being yeah. a huge part of our prayer focus this week. Absolutely. Be amazing. So, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and I can close us in prayer with that if you yeah if you like. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Before we do that, I just yeah. just one thing that made me think when you did a quick plug, but we're talking about you know areas that we're mm. trusting God. You know, next week we're actually going to come back and, and and dive into one specific area where I know a lot there are a lot of question marks right now is around the area of finances. Yeah. And what do we do? You know, with things happening the way they are, and we're going to have Dave Dryden, who's one of our elders, with us next week, and is um, an investment uh, person, understands uh, finances very well, and has a strong biblical perspective on, on those kinds of things. And, and I, I'm always encouraged by Dave because the message is always, you know, you trust God and, and, and God will show you. So, um, gosh, I just, got, <laughs> I just got choked up. We need tissues. <laughs> you mean to take it from here, Blake? Yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, I just come before you today. I thank you so much just for the opportunity um, that we get to, to, to <coughs> come together and to be able to study your word, Lord, as, as we talk about faith. Lord, I pray it for me and I pray it for our, our congregation. I pray it for our people that are listening um, at home, Lord, that, that our faith supersedes our unbelief on a daily basis. And Lord, with that, there's question marks for um, what, what job situations are going to look like and, and what school going to look like next week and, and things like that. Lord, I just pray that our faith consumes us um, more than, than our fear, uh, more than our unbelief. Lord, I thank you for the opportunities we get to lift up our students, get to lift up our educators and our families to be united, Lord, and that we have faith that you're going to move. Um, but Lord, most importantly, we continue to pray um, that, that the gospel is spread and that who you are is made known to those that might not know you. And, and so, Lord, we just pray for those to come to, to a, a saving relationship with you, Lord. And again, I pray that our faith becomes way bigger than our fears mm -hmm. and our unbelief. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thanks. Thanks for being with us tonight. We enjoyed hanging out with you. Yeah, thank you.